Praise the Lord and a very warm welcome to everyone that is joining us in the WICC English worship service, both from this city and from the nations of the world. It's such a joy to be again in the presence of God. What a precious time of worship. The presence of God is healing, it's enriching, it's comforting. The presence of God just does so many things in our life and I'm so grateful to God for that. Today, I want to take the final part of the series we have been working on through the last, you know, many weeks. We've been talking about the series called Walking in Love. Walk in Love. God has been calling us as a church to walk in love. So in this final part of the series, I want to start with the scripture. First John chapter 4 and verse 17. First John 4, 17 says like this, by this, love is perfected with us so that we may have confidence on the day of judgment because as he is so also are we in this world love is perfected with us because as he is we are also in this world you know it's been amazing just to do this journey of growing in love walking in love learning to love one another and walking in the fear of god and uh, today, even as we've come to the sixth part and the closing part, I believe there are some deep truths God wants us to delve into. God wants us to come to a place of walking in a lifestyle of love perfected. A lifestyle of knowing God and, 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 and manifesting God's love in a very powerful way to the community and to the world around us. The Bible says that if we walk with God, the natural consequence of walking with God is fellowship. So we would have fellowship one with another. First John chapter 1 and verse 5 to 7 says like this. This is the message we've heard from him and announced to you that God is light. And in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and yet walk in darkness, we lie and we do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sins. There is something about walking in the light as he is in the light. That God is light and in him there is no darkness. If you were to define darkness, it wouldn't be a substance, it would be the absence of light. And when God himself is defined, his nature itself brings light, his nature itself uh, you know, enlightens who we are, the purpose of our life, why we're living, what we're doing with our life, the absence of God causes us to walk in darkness. The absence of knowing God and loving God and walking with God, that causes us to walk in darkness. And the Bible says that, that if we walk in the light as He Himself is in the light, one of the natural results of walking in the light is fellowship. And yet many people, they struggle to walk in fellowship. Many people walk, struggle to walk in fellowship one with another. One of the four foundations that the apostles laid out in Acts chapter 2, when they got, uh, got saved and got baptized in the Holy Spirit, is they devoted themselves to apostles' teaching. They spent time in prayer together. They broke bread in communion and they had fellowship. But when we begin to have fellowship with one another, one of the things that happens when people begin to interact more, different kinds of people begin to interact, one of the things that happens is that people begin to get offended. Once we're offended, fear comes in. And we begin to become afraid of being hurt or accused or lied or whatever about. Now, God wants us to live a life free of fear. Because the Bible says, there's no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear. You and I are on this journey. I don't claim to have arrived, but I'm on the journey. I'm on it. I, I, I'm growing in it. I'm walking in it because I really want to come to a place where we can just move from loving somebody to becoming love. First John 4, 17 to 19 says like this, by this, love is perfected with us. By this, love is perfect. There are some ways by which God can perfect His love inside us. By this, love is perfected with us so that we may have confidence on the day of judgment because as he is so are we in this world there is no fear in love but perfect love casts out all fear 
See, this is the key. Because fear involves punishment. And the one who fears is not perfected in love. God is saying we have an op option. We either walk in fear about, of people or we can walk in love. We can walk in fear. What if they leave me and go? What if they hurt me? What if they speak against me? What if they slander me? Or we can walk in love. And when we walk in love, we are perfected in love because God holds us by the hands. We love because He first loved us. And the one who does not, the one who does fear, the one who walks in fear, in our relationships, in our friendships, in our family, in our marriages, if we're walking in fear, the Bible says we have not been perfected in love. For this, let's just look at the introduction of what is love so that we can go into what it would mean to be perfected in love. We saw in the second part of the six-part series of walking in love, we saw that God is love. If someone were to ask, what is love? It's not a feeling, it's not just an emotion, it's not this or that. God is love. This is what the Bible is saying. God is love. Knowing God as love and believing in Jesus who is love. God is love. He's the source of all love. And believing in Him, 1 John 4, 16 says, We have come to know and have believed the love which God has for us. We have come to know the love and believe the love. That is knowing Jesus. And believing in Jesus is the opening into a lifetime of walking in love. We have come to know the love and believe the love because God is love. We saw what love is. What is true love? God is love. It's His nature. We saw it was the nature of God. We saw love is a fruit of the Holy Spirit that He's putting in our heart. Not an emotion, not a decision we feel. We, you know, something that we feel at some time. It's something that has to be grown. We saw love is truly a revelation of Jesus Christ in our love because He is love. We saw love is a result of abiding in Christ. The more we spend time with Christ, the more we become love just like Jesus is love. And we are going to see today that love is a maturity. A maturity that we walk in Christ-likeness. Every one of us, all through our years, may walk in a battle between fearing people and loving people. We may have a constant battle of, should I walk in fear? Should I be afraid of this person or that person? Or can I walk in love? Many times around the world when we see people that threaten or hurt or intimidate or, or for whatever reason wound us, we walk in fear. We want to back out. We don't want to speak with them. We want to stay clear our trouble. And when we come to fellowship, it's the same thing. When we come to church, there are people that hurt us, the people that wound us, people that offend us. And we make a decision oftentimes in our life whether we want to walk in love or we don't want to walk in love. It is a revelation. Why do we fear? We fear because we don't want to lose control. If we lose control of the environment, we may have loss, we may have pain in our life, and who among us likes loss or pain? We don't like loss or pain. We don't like to be wounded. Uh, I know the times in my life where I've been wounded, and it just hurts so much. And we ask a million questions, why Lord? How Lord? What, why, why did I have to go through this? But I want to proclaim over you today, 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7, the Bible tells you, for God has not given you a spirit of fear. People of God, God has not given you and me a spirit of fear. We are not called by God to live in fear. We are called by God to live in love. We are called by God to walk in love. What a wonderful life that would be. God's not given us a spirit of fear, but of love, of power, and a sound mind or self-control. When we feel like running away, the Spirit of God in us tells, get a grip of your life. Self-control, calm down. You don't run away. You're, 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 I was talking in one of the sessions, I was saying, many times we like to be private people. But I want you to know, God, in privacy alone, you know, we are oftentimes hindered from being able to manifest love to many people. God is calling us to be conduits of God's love. How does this love come in our heart? The Bible says, for God is pouring this love into our heart through the Holy Spirit. God doesn't want us to be a slave of love, uh, of fear, but He wants us to be slaves of righteousness. 
He wants us to be slaves of, of love, of knowing that when we are slaves of God, we begin to carry His nature. And His nature is love. His nature is tender. His nature is kind. His nature is, you know, He just wants to give unconditionally from His goodness, from His abundance. Romans chapter 8, verse 14 through 17 says like this, For all who are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. One of the things the Bible is qualifying, the ones who are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery leading to fear again, but you have received a spirit of adoption as sons by which we cry, Abba, Father. We must understand something. When we come to God, when we receive Jesus as our Lord and Savior, God becomes our Father. And when God becomes our Father, His nature becomes our nature. His passion, His dreams become our dreams. What He wants, you know, becomes our most imp uh, priority. But oftentimes, fear comes in our heart. And we don't want to walk that road. We don't want to walk, you know, we don't want to be able, we don't want, we want to be in control. We don't want to be in a place where we're vulnerable. And so we walk in fear. And the Bible says that God's not given us a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear. God doesn't want you, brothers and sisters, to fall back into fear. God wants us to run forward as the sons and daughters of God. God has given us a spirit of adoption, which means we are taken into the family. You are not without an identity. You're not without hope. You're not without life. God's taken you into the family, and He has given us a spirit of love by which we call out, Abba, Father. The revelation of God's love in my life, if I remember after my salvation and being baptized in the Holy Spirit, the revelation of God's love in my life has been the most pivotal moment in my life where it turned everything around, understanding how God loved me. I began to understand that I could be safe in God's love. My reputation would be guarded in God's love. Our testimony would be safe in God's love. People can spoil your testimony. They can spoil your reputation. But I want you to know when you are, when you are safe in God's love, you begin, to less, you begin to wonder less about your reputation because you know God will safeguard your testimony. 1 John 4, 18, we saw that there is no fear in love. You know, it's either love or it's fear. There is no fear in love. When we're walking in fear, we don't know what it means to walk in love towards people. And when we're walking in love, we don't know what it means to fear people. Because the love in our heart removes that fear because we begin to think about their benefit. Love in our heart makes us think about others' benefit. How can my life be a blessing to them? How can I make a difference in the lives of people? So today, let's, we looked at what love is, that God is love. But now let's go deeper. Let's look at what is perfect love or perfected love. If perfect love casts out fear, if I'm perfected in love, I want to know what is this perfect love. James chapter 1 and verse 4 says like this, And let endurance have its perfect result, so that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. Perfection is a place of lacking nothing. It is a completeness. In fact, the Greek word perfect is telia. In, in fact, in the strong uh, Greek uh, dictionary, though it comes from the word telos, which is complete, a completeness. You know, a, a, a shalom, a perfection, a, an absence of nothing. It is brought to wholeness. And God is saying that God wants you to walk in a love that lacks nothing. God wants you to walk in a love that is complete. God wants you to walk in a love that, is, that doesn't fear, that walks in faith. Perfect love is to mature in love. Perfect love is to love like Jesus loves. Perfect love is to progress from acts of love to becoming love itself. Perfect love is God in us. Perfect love is the love of God in us because God is love. Perfect love is when God has complete rule and reign. Listen to me again. 
perfect love is God in us. Not that he just is welcomed to be a, a, a savior. But perfect love is when God, we are giving our lives in abandonment to God. That he has complete reign and rule over our life. That every act that we do, we want to walk in the love of God. 1 John 4, 17 says, By this, by this love is perfected with us, so that we may have confidence in the day of judgment. Because as He is, so are we in this world. When we are perfected in love, when we abandon to God's rulership in our life, we have no right to be angry with others, to be unforgiving with others. No right to be slandering others. No right to be we mean to others. Because His love is now perfecting us. That is why Jesus said, Forgive them that hurt you. Bless them that curse you. You know, those that strike one cheek, show the other. Because it's love manifesting. This is why God, while we were still enemies of the cross... Christ Jesus demonstrated his love for us. That's perfect love. A love that can love enemies. A love that can do good to them that do evil to us. This is perfect love. This is Jesus. This is the gospel. The good news of Jesus Christ. That he is perfect love. That he can love you not because you are perfect. He loves you in spite of your weaknesses. And I don't know who is listening to me today. I want to tell you there is one who is perfect love, Jesus, our Lord and our Savior, who loves you unconditionally. No matter what, what sin you have done, God so loved you that he gave his only begotten son, Jesus, who is perfect love, that if you will believe him and receive him into your life from this day onwards as your Lord and Savior, you will not die perish eternally, you will live with God eternally. What an amazing love. This is the message of perfect love. And this is the love now that God is calling you and me to walk in. That when we know Jesus as our Savior, God wants us to not be immature in our life of love. God wants us to be mature in loving. Love, mature in loving our spouse. Mature in loving our brothers and sisters. Mature in loving our families. Mature in loving the church and mature in loving the lost. God wants us to move from a place of self-gratification to a place of selfless loving others. We saw in this journey of love that we go through different stages of walking in love. A first stage of walking in love, we saw in the second part of the series, we saw the different stages is that we come to a place of acquaintance where you get to know somebody. And from this place of acquaintance, that's, that's either a place of friendship or fellowship or, or, or maybe if you're in love with somebody, you're planning to get married, it's a place of romance, it's a place of acquaintance. Then from there, you go into the second stage where people get disillusioned. Where they say, oh, okay, uh, this person is not as amazing as I thought it was. Uh, you're married now or, you, or you're, you're working together with somebody and you get disillusioned with the person. Why is this person like this? And then you go into a third stage, you get into disappointment, deep disappointment. I don't know what I was thinking. Why did I even get into this relationship? Why did I get married to this person? Why did I come to this particular fellowship? Why did I be part of it? You get into disappointment. But from there, God begins to pour His love into your heart and my heart. And He begins to change us. And He says, you know, your marriage, you've been, you, you, were, uh, you, you were romantically involved and then you got disillusioned and now you're disappointed. But God is saying, but I can help you love your spouse all, all over again. I can teach you to grow in love because love is not a feeling. Love is God in you. Love is God manifesting in you. Love is God's rulership over you. God, it, it, love is God abiding in you. Love is God wa working through you. Love is God serving through you. Love is all of that and perfected in you. That is why even if you've had a bad day in your relationship, in your marriage, in your home and all of that, I want you to know, go right back to God because God wants to take you from disillusion and disappointment. He wants you to grow in love and not just there, He wants to perfect you in love. Perfected love is the fifth stage. It's a mature love. That's when we are not only doing acts of love, we are now being transformed into love. In perfect or mature love, there's no lack of confidence. We're not afraid of confidently loving God and loving people. We know if we love people here on earth, when we go to heaven, we have confidence on judgment day, the Bible says. 
When we walk in perfect love, we don't have to be afraid of eternity and judgment day because we know when we walk in love, we have walked in, in God. We have loved like God. When we walk in perfect love or mature love, there's no lack of confidence. There's no fear of consequences. Many times we are afraid of consequences. If I love them unconditionally, will they take advantage of me? Will they do that to me? Will they do this to me? No, there's no fear of consequences. That is why many people have gone out of their way because of the love of Jesus and, and even been willing to lay down their life so that others would know the love of God or serve others, to be able to serve others. Because it's perfect love. They're not afraid of consequences. In perfect love, there's no fear of failure. That if I do this, if I, if I serve like this, will I be a failure? Will my marriage be a failure? Will my home be a failure? No, in perfect love, there is no fear of failure because God is the one who scripts your success story. The world may call you a failure. God calls you his success story. When you go to heaven and see him face to face, he'll say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Come into your rest. In perfect love, there is no fear of loss. Many times people think, I've spent my whole life serving God. Or I've spent my whole life, you know, loving this partner, uh, loving my spouse. Or I've spent my whole life serving these people. And they've been ungrateful. I want you to know, perfect love, there is no loss. Because you were a healing balm in that generation, in that community. You were a source of people coming to know about God's love. In perfect love, there's no loss. In perfect love, there's, there is no fear of judgment, of being misunderstood. There's no fear of of people misunderstanding you. They may misunderstand you, but there's no fear of it. When people misunderstand us, slander us, or they lie about us, or they they question our intentions, I want you to know, when you and I love them perfectly, we won't be afraid of being misunderstood. Because we know, just like Jesus, we can say, Father, forgive them, for they did not know what they're doing. Perfect love makes us, makes us, strong in the face of misunderstanding. There is no fear of persecution when we love people perfectly. We're not afraid of being persecuted. That's why Jesus said that. He said, Father, forgive them because there's no fear anymore. You see, when perfect love came, that love came for sinners. When perfect love came, that love came for the lost. When perfect love came, you and I, we were enemies of this gospel. But that love came for you and that love came for me. Perfect love came so that we may be found. The only fear, in fact, that we legitimately can walk in is the fear of God. And the fear of God is reverence and respect for God that comes when we behold that God is love. When we see He's holy, He's such a loving God. We don't have to, but we want to walk with God. We want to walk in that love. Perfect love does not promise you and me an absence of pain. Many of us, we, we want a life that, has, that, that is, you know, a life that is devoid of loss or pain. We don't want to ever suffer loss and we don't want to ever suffer pain. We want to be free from loss and we want to be free from pain. But I want you to know we're living in a fallen world. The devil is a destroyer. He comes to steal, to kill And to destroy. But I want you to know that God has come that you and I might have life. And how can we have life? We have life when we encounter the love of God. The only way to be born again is to encounter Jesus as the life of God. The love of God. He said, I am the way, the truth and the life. And no one comes to God except through me. If you want to know life. You and I can experience abundant life by experiencing Jesus. Not by a formula prayer. Listen to me. Not by a formula prayer, which may be your entrance into, the, the, uh, into life, but by experiencing God as love, which is your pathway to abundant life. The sinner's prayer may be your doorway to experience life, but walking in the love of God is your pathway to abundant life, where you and I live a life that's so abundant. Perfect love does not promise us an absence of pain, but tells, assures us the presence of God because God is the source of perfect love. God is the source. He wants to fill your heart with this love. He wants to, the Bible says in First John four nineteen, 
we love because he first loved us. He's the source of this perfect love. And God wants you and me to look to God so that we can walk in this perfect love. So what would it look like if you and I walked in perfect love? And I want to, you know, share these eight points about what would it really look like if we walked in perfect love. Firstly, if we walked in perfect love or perfected love in our heart from God, God is the source and we are walking in perfected love, the first thing that would happen is that we would hate darkness and walk in the light. The Bible says in 1 John 2, 9, the one who says he is in the light and yet he hates his brother is in darkness until now. God's saying, if you say you are in the light but you hate your brother or sister, you're in darkness, you're not in the light. The one who loves his brother abides in the light and there's no causing of st- cause of stumbling for him. If we love our brothers and sisters, the ones that who are, who are hurting us, offending us and you know, causing all kinds, God is saying, if you love them, and you're walking, you're walking in the light. And then you can't stumble. There's just no way you can stumble because you're walking in love. But the one who hates his brother is in darkness and walks in darkness and does not know where he's going because the darkness has blinded his eyes. Which means we may claim to know Jesus, but we have no clue what we are doing with our life and how we're living because the darkness we're walking in has blinded our eyes. God is saying, he who loves the world and the things of the world does not know the love of God. First John 2.15 says, Do not love the world nor the things of the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. If we love the world, we don't know God's love. If we have God's love, we don't love the world. What is the love loving the world? The lust of the flesh, desires of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, what all we want, we see around, and the pride of life, being a proud person. That is from the world, God is saying. That is worldly, carnal. And God is saying, if there is pride in life, we don't love God. If we walk in pride, I know better, I'm smarter, I, oh, we don't love God. But if we love God, we will put to death the deeds of the flesh, which is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Because the Bible says this is not from God. Pride of life is not from God. Lust of the flesh is not from God, but it's from the world. It's from the world. So the second way, the second thing we know that we are walking in love. Firstly, we would walk away from darkness. Secondly, we would obey God's commandments. First John 3, 2 says, Beloved, now we are children of God. It's not yet appeared what we are going to be. But we know that when He appears, we will be like Him. When He comes, we will be like Him because we will see Him just as He is. And everyone who has this hope fixed on Him purifies Himself just as he is pure. If we are walking in perfected love, we not only talk about being purified by faith, we will, Bible says, if we walk in perfected love, we will purify ourselves. We will choose, I want to walk a holy life because of love. I want to walk a, a, a humble life because of love. I want to walk a faithful life because of I have encountered God's perfect love. I want to walk a life serving God because I've encountered God's perfect love. 1 John 5, 2 says, For this, by this we know we love the children of God when we love God and observe His commandments. So the the, the sign of loving God's people is connected to loving God and obeying His commandments. It's so connected to that. The third way by which we know we love God or we are walking in perfected love. Firstly, walk out of darkness. Secondly, we saw we obey God's commandment. But the third way we know what does it mean to walk in perfected love is that we would abide in Christ. We would be intimately in love with God all the time. 1 John 3, 2 says, 1 John 4, 16. 1 John 4, 16 says, we have come to know And have believed the love which God has for us. We have come to know and believed the love that God has for us. Who is this one we have come to know and believe? That's Jesus. In fact, God is calling Jesus love. The word of God is saying, we have come to know and believe the love which God has for us with Jesus. 
For God is love. And the one who abides in love abides in God. What a powerful scripture. The one who abides in God is the one who is actually abiding in love. And he's saying, if we don't dwell in a life of love, if we don't dwell in this lifestyle of constantly loving God and loving people, the Bible says, then we don't abide in God. He who does not walk in love is not walking in God. He who does not walk a life fear, f- f- uh, free of fear is not knowing the power of walking in the love of God. So this is a powerful revelation that the one who focuses his life I want to abide in God, who focuses his life on abiding in God, has to focus his life on truly abiding in love. For those who walk in love are the only ones that truly abide in God. Fourthly, the fourth way, thing we know about walking in love is that when we walk in love, we learn to love our brothers and sisters in the body of Christ. We learn to love one another. Not because... Everybody is perfectly lovable. But everybody is being transformed into love. God is working on all our lives. He's still working on us to make us His nature. God is still working on you and me. Don't give up as yet. You have come the journey. Let's complete what God has begun. You're finding it difficult to love your spouse. You've come thus far. Let's complete it. Let's become perfect love. You're finding it difficult to love the ones that take an advantage of you. Forgive them. Let's perfect this love. Let's complete the journey. In, when God wants you and me to walk in perfected love, God wants you and me to walk in love for the body of Christ. First John 3 and verse 11 says, for this is the message which you heard from the beginning that we should love one another. That's, this is the message from the beginning. You love one another. Not as Cain who was evil and slew his brother and for what reason did he slay him? Because his deeds were evil and his brother was righteous. The Bible is saying don't love as Cain loved who got angry because his brother was walking right and he wasn't. But rather, I want you to love one another. First John 4, 19, we love because he first loved us. For if someone says, I love my brother and is, and, 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 you know, and I mean, loves God and hates his brother, is a liar. God is calling us to love one another. Fifthly, how do I know? What happens when we walk in perfect love? When we walk in perfect love, what I shared before, we will walk free of fear in our life. Everywhere we look, when fear comes, we ask God, God, can you fill my heart with love? Many people living in fear in their marriages, fear of, will he leave me and go? Fear of, will she do something, you know, against me, hurt me? People are living in fear of words, fear of, you know, being wounded deeply in your heart. And I want you to know, when you and I, when we encounter God, when we allow God to pour His love into our heart, when we abide with God, we abide in love. And then when we see the person that's hurting us, we respond in love. We respond back to that person saying, I know they've wounded me, but I just abided in love. I'm just coming out of a presence of God, a place of love, and I can love this person. The antidote to offense is abiding with God. The antidote to fear is abiding with God because God is love. First John 4, 18, we saw there is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out all fear. Sixthly, when we walk in perfect love, people of God, I want you to know that in this place of perfect love is truly an assurance of our salvation. Now you might wonder, wait a minute, what do you mean assurance of our salvation? 1 John chapter 3 and verse 13 says, Do not be surprised, brethren, if the world hates you. Don't be surprised that the world hates you. We know that we have passed from death to life. Listen, watch these words. We passed from death to life because we love our brothers and sisters. Wait a minute, I thought we passed from death to life because we named the name of Christ. We confessed Jesus as our Lord and Savior. Yes, of course, with that we entered into the kingdom. But now God is saying, but truly we are passing from death to life, not just by a confession with our mouth. We are passing from death to life by coming to a place of loving 
the brethren. Wow. I did not know that genuinely loving God and people was going to affect my eternity. Did you know that your eternity is hinged on genuinely walking in love? Because 1 John 2.28 says, Now little children abide in Him. Little children abide in Him, the Bible is saying. So that when He appears, we may have confidence and not shrink away from Him in shame. He's telling the believers, little children, He's telling the believers of the church, 1 John is written to the believers. He's saying, little children, abide in Him, stay in Him, so that when He appears, we may have confidence and not shrink away from Him in shame at His coming. Which means it's a possibility that believers may shrink away in shame when He returns. Why? Because we won't be looking like Him. Many people would have named the name of Christ, but not walked the walk of Christ. It says in verse 29, if you know that He is righteous, you know that everyone who practices righteousness is born of Him. So God is taking us to a journey of walking in love. First John 4, 7, the Bible says, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God. Which means if we are in God, then we will love one another. If we are from God, if we are dwelling in God, then we will love one another. And everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. People of God, God is calling us to this place of walking in love. God is calling us to this place of walking in this born again experience. And assurance of our salvation. Because now we are just not naming the name of Christ. But just as God is love, we are becoming love. Just as God is righteous, we are practicing purity, the Bible says. We are practicing righteousness, the Bible says. Just as we saw in 1 John 2, 29, if you know that He is righteous, you know that everyone who practices righteousness is born of Him. And what is righteousness? Doing the right thing. And what is the right thing? Obeying His commandments. And what is the commandment we saw in First John that God asks us to obey? It is to love people and to love God. The two great commandments. Love God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind. And to love your neighbor as your own self. These are the two great commandments God is calling you and me to. And I, I want you to know that God is a God who, who wants us to walk in that love. And if it's going to affect our eternity... I don't want us to just say I love God and hate our brothers. Or, or I don't want us to just love one another because of, of some benefit we're going to get. I want us to become love. I want us to become the source of God's love. When we walk in love, indeed, we will also share what we have with others. We will give to those that don't have. We will partner with those in need. Just like God gave His Son. So many people so many people, they know John 3.16 For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him shall not perish but have eternal life. If you believe in Jesus, you will not die. You will have eternal life. Everybody knows John 3.16 For God so loved that He gave. But do you know First John 3.16? First John 3.16 says For we know love by this that He laid down His life for us. And we ought to lay down our life for Him. The eighth and final point about walking in love, perfected in love, is not only that we run away from darkness, not only we abide in God, not only we give to needs in missions or to people in need, not only do we do all of that, but we are willing now to lay down our life for the sake of the, the good news, to, to bring the healing of God into the lives of people. When we walk in love, we hate our enemies. No. When we walk in love, we love our enemies with all our heart. This is what God is calling us to. Hate has no place in love. It is love that changes us. We cannot hate our enemies. We cannot hate the ones that have offended us. We cannot 
keep grudge against people that are mad at us when we love god we unconditionally love others because we are walking in love and we choose to lay down our life for others for the bible says for this is love first john 4:10 says this is love not that we loved god but he loved us and sent his love as a propitiation for your sin and our sin my sin this is love this is love not that we loved god but he loved us and gave his son for your sin and my sin people of god today when we are perfected in this love i believe there is a place of encountering perfect love and then being perfected in love when we are perfected in love perfect love brings us to a place of confidence when we see jesus face to face on the judgment day we will have nothing to fear nothing to be ashamed of because we have confidence before god perfect love will cast out all fear here on earth fear of man and all fear when we see him face to face we will not be afraid of god because god is love and we are perfected in love there will be nothing to fear when we are walking in perfected love we will love the brothers and sisters no matter what they do to us we will love the lost no matter what they do to us because we are perfected in love and finally when we are perfected in love we become like jesus we become like him we love because he first loved us and this is what i want to pray with every one of you today it's my prayer today right now that in Jesus mighty name not only would be acquainted with love lord we'd not be stuck in a place of disillusionment with love we'd not be in a place of disappointment with love but we will grow in love until one day you will mature us into perfect love for jesus is love perfected Jesus is perfect love and where there is perfect love that perfect love will make us perfected in love father i pray today right now perfect us in love perfect us in love that we will walk in the love of god that we will not walk in fear anymore we submit our lives into your hands because we believe the good work you have begun in our life you are faithful to perfect it as in the day of the lord jesus we give you glory and honor in jesus mighty name amen and amen god bless you people of god it's my prayer have a wonderful lifetime ahead of loving god and loving people not walking in fear anymore but walking in the love of god god bless you and may you live a life of not just doing acts of love but being perfected into love because god in you is love and you are going to walk and live as the love of god amen